We're here today in uh, the backyard of a gardener on Sackville, New Brunswick, and this is Laurel. And this is uh, an amazing garden. I think what really always strikes me about it is how many different kinds of plants that there are everywhere uh, in this garden. And it's like a south facing slope that goes up behind us. And right now there's a lot of daffodils, a ton of cowslips, a lot of pulmonaria. What else have we got? The magnolias just come out into bloom. Yeah, there's a little pierce over there. Yeah. And the, um... the peonies are sticking their heads up, but not in flower yet. Yeah. So, and the bees are very, very, very active. There's a lot of bees happening. So we're putting a video version of this also on YouTube. So if you're listening on the radio, you can have a peek at the garden as well. Uh, so Laurel, how, how long has it been that you've been gardening here? Uh, 38, 39 years. 39 years. Yep. Wow. So this is a 39 year old garden. <laughs> Some parts. And, and I imagine it started smaller and then got expanded over the years. Yeah, it was, it. I was, it was all grass with wow. a few trees along the periphery, but all grass. It was a devil to mow. Yeah. So we started digging up the grass and putting in plants. Yeah. As one does. And now it reaches all the way back down to the bottom and there's a tiny little patch of grass, which is, you know, nice to have for running around on for mm -hmm. grandkids and for things grandkids, like that. Yep, exactly. Other than that, it's mostly a perennial garden. Is that true? Yes. With like shrubs and trees. Yep. Yeah. Shrubs, trees, herbaceous perennials, bulbs, and a few edibles, raspberries in the veg patch. Nice. Yep. Always nice to have a veg patch and some berries yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. You got to have that going on as well. Mm -hmm. um, and had you always been a gardener? Like, did you grow up with your family having gardens? No. No? No, I didn't. I, I got a job as a gardener in the summer after I graduated from university for just the summer. And I married a British guy who was a keen gardener mm. and whose parents were keen gardeners. So. Nice. That's how I learned. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, and sometimes that's all it takes, I find, like a little bit of gardening experience and then you kind of like realize the whole world that is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get the bug. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And spring is a great time. I feel like a lot of people get the garden bug in spring because uh, it's so full of potential this time of year. Mm. Everything's just sort of like here and it's just sort of starting to grow and things haven't got too out of control yet. So <laughs> it's, it's a very uh, exciting time for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do you have like favorite spring kind of like phase that comes out? Well, I suppose um, the hellebores are usually the f oh, one yeah. of the first and the spring heather up by the side of mm -hmm. the house. And the bees love that. That's always nice to see that coming up you can see the flower heads all winter long yeah if they're not covered with snow and then it's just so exciting when they actually <laughs> turn color and open up yeah, and yeah. the bees find them and and then this pathway all that foliage is crocus foliage right and we wow. didn't plant that they just ended they just up there probably there. probably from seed because we don't deadhead the the crocus and that's always marvelous to see this sea of purpley blue mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. back there from and that's a little bit earlier when there's not like none of the trees are in bloom yet no so yep. it's like the yep. first sort of real yeah. blush of color i suppose this is one this is probably one of my favorite times when all the primulas are out yeah and the pulmonarias are out and all the fresh greens all the different mm -hmm. greens of the foliage. It's true. Um, everything looks lovely and fresh and hasn't been eaten or it hasn't dried out. And the, the shrubs are flowering and trees are flowering. And, you know, yeah, it's lovely. And we'll come into azalea time in a, a, couple, yeah. a few weeks. We're getting there. I think in Halifax, the azaleas are out. Oh, it's yeah. like, I'm always getting reports of like a couple, you know, just a week or 10 days ahead is like all it takes. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to talk today just about uh, adding plants to your garden and sort of doing that in a strategic way. Because we were talking the other day about how easy it is to go to the garden centers or the nurseries and just sort of uh, look at plant tags and be impulsive. And <laughs> then you end up with what I like to refer to as like a junk drawer garden, where I just sort of end up putting everything in the garden and then sort of saying, okay, well, I'll find out what's going to happen with this. Um, but 
I think that there's ways to be more strategic about it. So I'd wanted to get some tips from you about doing it. And I feel like spring is a great time for that because it's like you were saying about the foliage coming up. It's like you can kind of look around your garden and, and assess sort of what's there and what's not there anymore and what's mm -hmm. spread. So do you have any tips for sort of um, deciding maybe where you'd want to add plants or? Well, my, my number one tip is always have a have a plan have an idea of what you see in your garden now and what you want it to look like in say 10 years time right so and i always suggest that people um, really research plants before they try to buy them yeah. and look for something that has more than one season of interest yeah so it's always nice to have a rose in your garden but if you can have roses, especially if it's not a perpetually blooming one, then you're going to get maybe three weeks of blooms and then you have a rose bush. Yeah. No, not so much. Not so great. Um, but you can look for ones like, um, there's one back there that's called Therese Bagnier. It has red stems. The okay. new stems are, are red, so you can look cool. for So that's sort of like, like that. year-round something that you'd notice yep. in the garden. So yeah. you can see it in the wintertime or something that has beautiful fall foliage as well as maybe blooms. So the amelanchier right here. Oh yeah. It's got lovely sort of, you know, coppery colored new foliage. It's going to flower very soon. And then in the, the fall, it also has lovely fall color. Mm -hmm. So you can ask for more than that from a, from a plant. You get yeah, three. definitely. And the amelanchias are like a native plant that yes. grow all over the place too, which is yep. really nice. Yep. Yep. And the birds just love them. If yeah. you want to get, um, Wax wings. Oh, yeah. Cedar, cedar wax, wax wings. wings. When I get cedar wax wings in your garden, plant an amelanch here. They just yeah. are magnets That's for true. Them. Or hascaps. We were talking about hascaps that the other day too? in terms of hascaps. They yeah. are just like, they'll find a hascap bush <laughs> anywhere, which is amazing. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So go for, go for something that's going to give you long-term beauty, whether mm -hmm. it's foliage, flowers, bark. The stuartia over there behind us has flowers. It has beautiful fall color and a more mature shrub tree like that one um is starting it has exfoliating bark and it has different oh, nice. different colored bark it's just gorgeous yep so look for things like that yeah um and you you said like think about what you want your garden to look like in 10 years which is like yeah. that's a good long-term vision i feel like i'm i sort of get stuck on thinking about it like in you know, in the spring, I'm like, okay, what do I want in the fall? And that even feels like a long time away. But yeah. but having a, a broader, longer term is a good idea. Yeah. Because things take a long time to grow. Yes. And they, or they grow as large as you expect them to, or larger than you expect right. them to. Um, you look at the label and it says it's going to be 10 feet by f six feet. And you think, oh, there's no way that's going to happen in my garden. Yeah. But sure enough, I mean, I never thought that rhododendron over there would get right. that big. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you don't want to plant things such that you have to take them back out and thin them out, unless they're herbaceous perennials. But put your woody things in so it gives them, they'll get that growing up. And in 10 years' time, you'll have that framework. Right. And then give you them can put enough. the little things in afterwards. Yeah, and give them enough room that they can spread to their mature size yeah. with an understanding of what that's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing worse than planting a lovely tree in the wrong spot. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, they don't like to be moved. And that'll set it back by quite a bunch of time. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you or having to take it down as a mature tree because it's just impinging on another tree or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. And where, <laughs> where do you find is good to do research on different plant types? Like you mentioned, you know, plant labels are one thing, but... Uh, there's so much more information than you can just find on that. All the plant labels usually have is like, you know, when it blooms approximately and mm -hmm. what, how big it's going to mm -hmm. get. But. Well, I was a member of the RHS in England for many years, a couple oh, yeah. decades, and they have great information. You, you might have to tweak it a bit because they're so much warmer than, right. than we are. But this surprising number of, of plants that um, are still comparable if you live say in the north of england for instance right. but i find um a really good source is the missouri botanical garden oh okay they have a really good website and they're a little bit warmer than we are in sackville but probably 
probably comparable to St. John or maybe yeah. Fredericton. You know, they, they do get cold. They get the cold, cold winter. which And they get difference. hot quickly. Yeah. It's much sooner than we do in Sackville. But they have a great website, I find. And then maybe some other... Um, I think the University of Connecticut has one, or University of Vermont. I tend to find ones that are not commercial um, sources yeah. are are pretty good places. Yeah, and then I have a bunch of reference books as well. I have the, you know, what is it, the Gardening in Canada book. I think it was okay. Reader's Digest put it out oh, yeah, first. Nice. It was done by a guy who ran the experimental farm in uh, in Ottawa. Trevor Cole, I think, was his name. Okay. So. I haven't seen that one, yeah. But yeah, having a nice picture book I find is great, especially when people are getting started because it's like, you know, you can walk around and look at people's gardens in town, but sometimes it's hard to decide what you want based when you're just learning all of these different plant mm -hmm. names and trying to figure out what they are. Yep, yep. So, yeah, that's, that's a good winter reads or gardening books. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> look at all the pictures and imagine. <laughs> Try not to drool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so when you uh, are thinking about plants you want to add, do you sort of go at it with like a, have like a wish list of specific plants? Or is it more something where you're like, I need a, something that will work in the shade that's going to, you know, be about three feet tall and flower in the spring? Like, are you that specific about it? Or do you just sort of uh, go to the plant first or go to the characteristics first? Go to the characteristics, characteristics first, yeah. yeah. I want a plant for this location, full sun, damp soil, right? woody, six foot high, woody, yeah. something like that. And then I usually I go to the Cornhill Nursery Catalog right. and have a good look at that. Yeah. Um, and then go to the, the reference books and try to sort out what the possibilities are and what most likely, depending on the location in my garden and mm -hmm. how necessary it is, or maybe how flush of cash I am, I might go with something that's a little on the edge of the growing right. area here. So maybe a zone 5B6, I might give it a try. Yeah. Or I might think I really need something rock hardy here. So I'll go with something that I know will might be pedestrian, but right. Well, I That's know it's going to be grow. hardy and reliable. Yeah. 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 Pest free and that sort yeah. of thing. Well, and you must know after time, like where the microclimates are in your garden. So where you could put something that maybe was on the edge of a boundary. Mm -hmm. So that needed a little bit more heat. Right. Yeah. 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 Or a little less winter wind. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Wind is a big one. I find especially yeah, wind is here. a big one in this, yeah. in this area for sure. Yeah. And then have you found that those areas have like changed over time? I mean, I imagine that they would. So you're sort of every year looking at the conditions of your garden and thinking about adding things, but maybe an area where it was more exposed is now more sheltered. Mm -hmm. A little bit more sheltered. The still the wind still whips straight up from the Bay of Fundy through here. And because we're on an upper slope, we'd probably have to have, you know, a 20 foot wall or hedge. Right. Which, you know, was always Rob's dream. <laughs> um, to to actually to cut, have a wall the, cut the wind instead. down, yeah, yeah. Have, or just have a really high, a really high hedge, but uh, that wasn't going to happen. So, yeah, um, the foliage but things kind of are way. things are a little bit more sheltered than they were, but and more now we have more shade than we used to, right? Because we have more mature maturing trees and shrubs now. They've sort of light, lightish shade, except of course for the maples that are mm -hmm. really shady, but. Um, right, you've sort of gone with smaller trees that take up less space that yeah. are more like. More airy. Dappled shade yeah. instead of like a big canopy tree. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're finding less full sun. So I think I have a lot of peonies and I don't think I could fit another peony in. <laughs> Just, uh, well, certainly, I, I guess I could if I took something else out, but right. um, but there are fewer spots because there is a little more shade. And of course, peonies like as much sun as you can possibly give right. them. And when they're in so, full bloom, they're big plants yes. too. They take yeah. up a lot of space. Yes, they do take up a lot of space. So. But they're so beautiful. But um, yeah, I think too, 
I'm not sure if it's maybe the the soil is better than it used to be. Right. I think just because we leave most of the leaf litter and most of the uh, old foliage from the perennials, we leave it to die die back. So it's enriching the soil, and I think that's might be helping to change the kind of plants that we can grow here. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's kind of interesting. It's that. Just a nicer organic matter mix and yeah, richer soil. Mm. And do you find when you buy, like if you buy a shrub or a tree, often you would buy like, you know, one or two of them. But when you're buying, say, perennials that you want to add, do you sort of buy one and let it get bigger over time or maybe do some propagating or do you buy several? I guess it depends on where, but... It depends on the plant too. Mm -hmm. When I, if I buy a hosta or a daylily or uh, actually maybe even a primula, I have a good look at how the pot, how the plant's growing in the pot. Right. If you buy a young hosta, you can definitely see if there are maybe like four growing tips. Right. And so maybe there's already four plants. Four, in yeah, really, it just yeah. divide them. And I might grow them on in a pot for a while yeah. if I do that much dividing. So you can buy, say, a $20, $25 hosta. And if you have a good look at it, and if you're careful, you can either cut it apart or tease it apart and get four plants. So, yeah. you know, $5 a plant, you can't can't uh, argue with that at all. No, definitely not. Because perennials can get expensive. I think that's yes. a, a hard part is when I've been adding plants to my garden, it's like, you know, I'll sort of buy one and then it's like, you know, I guess I'm thinking 10 years down the line, then it makes more sense. But for a while, it's sort of underwhelming in your garden because, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't take up very much space. Mm -hmm. And some plants will stay diminutive and, and um, it's not that they're not vigorous, they just don't tend to spread a lot. Yeah. So you might want to buy two or three right from the get-go. Yeah. And have a little more impact to begin with and if they do yeah. grow well enough that you can divide them put them somewhere yeah. else in the garden that's great that perfect like spreader but not aggressive spreading yes. plant which yep. like is a line that is hard to walk sometimes in the garden <laughs> absolutely. absolutely and you have a lot of things self-seeding as well like do you do you go and gather like and sprinkle seeds around with some things or does it just sort of happen on its own with the insects or yeah it just happens with with the wildlife in the garden and the wind um yeah. the only plant i think that i have actually oh two they're both annuals one is uh, verbena barnariensis oh yeah i've saved the seed from that and just sprinkled it around in the sp spring and the second one is nigella oh yeah again nice. i'll save some seed and then sprinkle it around and hope yeah, yeah. that some things come up so yeah do you add many annuals it seems like the perennials sort of fill in the space yeah. i think of annuals as sort of like being a good gap fillers like yeah no i just generally just have annuals in the pots in the pots yeah. and then um which of course aren't out yet but i do put the nigella and the verbena well i used to have a cutting garden there i think this year it's going to be a nursery garden um so i sprinkle sprinkle it around i'll probably sprinkle some out front by that Hell, yeah. hell strip next to the yeah, asphalt. <laughs> totally. Yeah, right next to the road where and where they look so good there though. I love big showy funny things next to the road. If right? they'll actually grow up, that's yeah. uh, there's some work to be done out there. I think the dianthus has died back. Yeah, I saw that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Yep. Um, and you mentioned a nursery bed. Is that like? Do you have a space where you put new plants to try them out, or, or plants that I've divided? I dug oh, okay. up a rose that was outgrowing its space out front it was getting into a couple of plants that i really wanted to make sure they were okay and mm -hmm. this was one that was rugosa type i guess it was getting everywhere yeah. so i dug it out and i th i think i have a friend who wants it so i just oh, okay. popped it over there right that makes sense and i dug out a tom thumb cotoneaster and because it had, had been in there for years it had rooted along its stem so i just sort of broke it up and i replanted one piece and right. put a bunch back there. If they grow, great. Yeah. If it doesn't, well, I'm not at any great loss, but it would be nice to be able to spread that around yep. either in my garden or somebody else's. It's a lovely plant. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there was a peony as well, a chunk of peony that I think incidentally dug up last year. So I just tucked it into 
into there and it's come back up this year so i might nice. so find just a home leave it for it. a couple of years yeah and, or find a home for it somewhere in Saco. yeah so yeah nice yep um so when you are going shopping do you find spring is the best time to add plants yes yeah yeah i have added them in the fall but i have had a fair amount of um frost heave right now if you mulch them really well they should be okay but i think because the bottom of the garden or right on the edge of the marsh and the the bottom of the garden is quite damp um so i definitely wouldn't put anything down here in the fall yeah maybe farther up or in the front right because it's I the would. damage to the roots that's going to really destroy the plant over the yeah. winter. Yeah. yeah just heaves it up but um so many of the the nurseries either the the ones from the the grocery stores or even the commercial nurseries will have sales in mid-july i know yeah. <laughs> early july mid-july sometimes even the end of june i think good grief we're just getting started yeah, here it's true um so you can get some good bargains then yeah and if you have space in your garden and pop it right in and mulch it well so it doesn't dry out or or put it in a nursery bed and right where you keep, keep an, an eye, eye on it and make yep. sure it's doing and, got all the water it needs yeah and just uh, you could leave it there until the next spring if if you haven't got a spot for it right away and then plant it in its permanent home the next spring yeah 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 it seems like it's even difficult around the maritimes to find nurseries that are open in the fall yes. it's like a lot of them sort of tend towards the spring season and then sort of finish around yep. canada day and that's it yeah which makes sense yeah although they but, say you know you can plant right up until frost right as long as you mulch well yeah yeah and we have a very long fall here I yeah find. we do yeah. we really haven't had like deep frozen ground till after Christmas. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the whole fall to get things in there and get yep. them established. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So do you tend to go to the mm -hmm. nurseries or plant sales or like, you know, I, I always like the small independent nurseries, I think, because I like independent business better than mm -hmm. like the grocery stores or mm -hmm. the home centers. What are your preferences yeah. there? I, there are, there's one, big box store I will not go to because they they have and most they have annuals they have perennials and trees as well but their plants are so poorly taken care of yeah and they're just limp and looking awful and it I seems think, like oh. a lot of them they just get dropped there and they're in good shape because they're from wherever yeah. they came from where they've been grown and then yeah, and then they don't they take language. care of them and it just makes me cross you know yeah poor plant so but yes I like independent nurseries you know plug for Cornhill it's yeah. The place my my garden is built on Cornhill plants. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think uh, oh, at least 75% of the plants oh, in this wow. garden have come from Cornhill, I would awesome. guess. Yep. Yeah. Um, Cornhill is just outside of Moncton, uh, about half an hour outside of Moncton, mm -hmm. and, and it's in a beautiful area. The oh, first, yeah. First time we went there, it's like you sort of can see it on a map, but it's all just like rolling hills and like beautiful farmland, beautiful farmland around there. And mm. then it's an incredible space with like a big garden to walk around and a cafe with a pizza oven as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like a whole, a whole event. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a great, great place and very hardy, very hardy plants. So, and very well taken care of. Yeah. And there are a bunch of nurseries in, in the Valley, um, the Annapolis Valley that I really like Baldwin's and the yeah. Briar Patch okay. and um, Bunchberry is farther down and they, they're, maybe lean towards zone six seven plants right. a little more so yeah, it's a little more limited the deeper valley is like yeah. definitely a, a warmer area but you can always always find some nice plants down there and uh i like lowland gardens in great oh, yeah. village yeah, as lowland well gardens. they often have yeah. like yeah interesting other like it seems like it's sort of like the stuff that everybody has and then they'll have a few different perennials mm -hmm. yes yeah. well. and they have great annuals yeah, really and nice there's great area. antique stores in Great Village, too. Yeah. So it's like another place where there's kind of a couple of reasons to go on a date. Yeah, trip. yeah. But it's nice. It, it, the independent nurseries who are, are my kind of people, they're people who love plants, Yeah. right? So it's always nice to go to a place where you know those the things that they're growing, and, and they're selling them, but they, they really um, value a, a good plant. So that's always a nice place to go. 
nice. Yeah, definitely. I like to put my money into those for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And you mentioned like assessing sort of how many plants are maybe in a pot. Are there other things you look for when you're buying something just to like make sure it's a good quality? Or if you were picking from, you know, uh, an area? No, just make sure it looks like it's a, a vigorous plant, you know, like it's not struggling. Um, you probably don't want, certainly not this time of the year, you don't want to buy, say, a, a herbaceous perennial that has all its roots coming out of the pot because it's, right. it's overgrown that pot. Yeah. Um, in the, if, you, if you find it on sale in the late summer or fall, then it's probably a good you know, worth the worth the try because then you can divide it up, right? And it'll have time to grow some more new roots, so it yeah. won't be pot bound. But if it's already root bound, that's not a good in sign. The spring, in the yeah. spring, yeah. No, it's not a good good sign. So yeah, you just look for vigorous, healthy leaves. Yeah, um, that's the sort of thing. And then of course, um, yeah, your local plant sw sales and swaps, like the one the community mm -hmm. garden had on the yeah. weekend. Those are always good, especially if you're a new gardener. Yeah, you'll find out what grows well in this area, and you can ask a few questions. If you don't want something that is really going to spread, mm -hmm. then um, you just have to be careful. It's if I was in Nova Scotia, I would be going to the rare and unusual plant sale. Yes, coming up. Uh, next weekend on the 19th. Yeah, in Apple long Royal. weekend. Nice. And then there's also a native plant sale in Wolfville that's on Saturday, June 1st. So oh. that would be another nice one. In Wolfville? Yeah, in Wolfville. It's at the Botanical Gardens there. Oh, yes. And I think they have quite a few plants that they propagate and like as part mm -hmm. of their native gardens. And then there's a few nurseries that are going to that as well. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> sounds like a road trip. Yeah. <laughs> If you're listening to the Culinary Garden Show, it can be heard on CHMA 106.9 in Sackville, New Brunswick, CKDU 88.1 FM in Halifax, Nova Scotia, on Apple Podcasts, and you can see a video version of this on YouTube.